in front of the camera and behind the camera. The two stories behind each photograph. When viewing a photo, we often only ever experience light from the perspective of the camera. But for every image, there is another, less often shared story. What happens behind the camera? So for today's intents and purposes, we're going to look at the process of discovering images in nature, why photography has captivated millions of hearts around the world, including my own, and the therapeutic powers of wielding a camera. Neat. To be honest, I was just waiting to finish filming that sequence so I could put this shirt on because it's kind of windy out here. But it's extremely beautiful today. Uh, we're here in Point Lobos and I'm shooting a roll of Ultramax 400. And look at this shit. This place is an absolute gold mine. Just everywhere I turn, there's just something beautiful that I can photograph. It is like just a photographer's playground here. Probably anybody's playground. I mean, who could come here and not be down with this? have like red moss it looks like the dirt in like Sedona or something it's so crazy wow what a crazy place uh, right here there's no wind and just sun It took me about an hour or so to go through this little walk of Monterey Cypress here in Point Lobos. And it's not a very long walk. I think most people probably could have done it in, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. But that's the thing about having a camera, is that it kind of forces you to look a little bit closer and to slow down, particularly if you're shooting film. You really don't want to waste those frames. You want to take the time, get intimately familiar with the thing that you're trying to photograph, and to feel like you're doing it justice. I personally don't really feel like I'm in a position to make a good photograph of something, unless I've taken the time to actually get to know it a little bit. Whether that's a couple hours of being at a place before using my camera, or it's just the attitude and the, the slower pace in which I walk around. Sometimes I wish that the days were longer so that I could just keep doing this. For someone like me, I spend a lot of time behind a computer screen, and uh, if you live in the 21st century, you might too. But photography, whatever your medium may be, 
film or digital pinhole or whatever. It really is just a great excuse to put yourself in the way of beauty. And I think under the surface that's the reason why we all still do it. Why it becomes so addicting. day different point same camera Provia 100 this is actually my first roll of slide film how exciting Life is just so beautiful. It's really just a, a privilege to, to be able to take part in it. And there's something really special about just being able to slow down and capture a little piece of it. There was this quote, I believe it was from John Shaw's Nature Photography Handbook or something like that. And I'm paraphrasing, but it goes along the lines of Only I can capture this moment. Only me. Right now. Because it's only really happening this once. And because I have this camera here, I'm uniquely situated to seize and capture this moment that will never occur again. And when you start to look at the world like that through photography, eventually it starts to bleed over into the rest of your life. And I think that through photography, I've really cultivated this deeper sense of wonder about the world. I'm just more drawn to these little, these small details that I find beautiful. And I feel more connected to the world around me more of a sense of duty and respect. It seems that photography, even though it is largely the process of creating work to share with others, it's also a gift that keeps on giving to yourself.
the only thing I don't like about shooting in this forest is that I ran out of 800 speed, so I have to use my tripod. This has got to be one of my favorite places to photograph in the world. This redwood tree over here. The thing must have been like 300, 400 feet tall, something like that. Almost 2,000 years old. And it just comes thundering down and must have been spectacular if it did that. This is about the third time that I've been here to photograph this, but that's the beautiful thing about shooting things in the forest is that because of the nature of the way the sun filters through the trees, no two visits are ever the same. The light is always highlighting something new. The light is, I don't know, something magical about it. Today, our friend is uh, in shadow, but I think it's still very beautiful. Just look at this thing. It is like the biggest tree I think I've ever seen. It might look big on your screen, it might not. Maybe what would help if, is if I stood in here for scale. <laughs> this thing is enormous. Wow. walking and shooting photos. It's like two of my favorite things. And when you couple it with a place like this, it really kind of becomes a meditation. But I guess, thinking back, it really doesn't even need to be in a beautiful place like this. There are beautiful things all around us if we're just looking close enough. And I think that maybe that might be the greatest thing about photography. Is that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, and no matter what your surroundings, it encourages you to look for the beautiful things. Whether it be a moment between two people, the way the light is hitting a plant, or any number of things. And in that way, creating photographs is more than just making something for others to see, but it's a process of introspection and self-care. And one that I don't know what I would do without. So maybe uh, if you're feeling stagnant or stuck inside or, or creatively blocked, maybe just go out with your phone and just go shoot some photos of whatever you find. <laughs>